Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. Today you join me here at Derek for a special from the Spoken Wheel Show. Now these special videos will come on weeks like this where we do not have time to film an episode, usually due to school, and so we want to provide you with weekly content. You may have noticed I recently got my braces off. So because of this, we thought we would, you know, share our joy and pride for grills. grills. So this special is all about grills. So we want to start off with what really makes a good front grill. Now the first thing, it needs to stand out and be memorable. And it also needs to be functional and have a purpose. And it needs to be designed not as an afterthought. It needs to look like it belongs on it the car. It needs to be an integral part of the car, not something that's just thrown on there in the end. So let's get on to the most iconic grills. We have to start with the Rolls-Royce grill. Now the Rolls-Royce grill, you probably know, it's big, it's chrome, it's got the lines, it hasn't changed much, and you just Hundreds recognize we understand years. it. Yeah. It's a Rolls-Royce. It's the Rolls-Royce grill. So behind us, you can also see the infamous 1950s Cadillacs, which haven't changed for a very long time as well. They have big grills, lots of chrome. Nowadays, they substitute that with plastic, but you get the point. Next up, you have the BMW kidney grills. Which have actually never changed. They've just changed They've shape. saved kidneys, and yeah. they've just kind of evolved a little bit, but here you can see a nice photo of an evolution of a 2002, an E30, and an M2, seeing it slowly get bigger. So on to the smallest grills that we've seen. So one of them is the 1962 Alfa Romeo Giulia Spyro Veloce. Next up, we have the BMW 2002 again. It's a very small kidney grill, but there's also another grill behind it, so it's a bit weird. And next up, infamously, we have the Aston Martin Lagonda, the grill, which I, I it, describe it. it. You, can't, you can't describe it because it's so small. It's about the size of my front headlight. It's, if that. If that. There, yeah. It's too small to count. On to the biggest grills we've ever seen. And as you know, if you have not seen a BMW in the past 20 years, You've now seen that grills are getting larger and larger on these very big, big German cars. Now, if you thought that grill was big, this grill is huge. It is so big, so huge. You thought Lexuses and RX ones were so tiny, this got even bigger. Yeah, the Lexus LM300H, we don't get this in the US luckily, but uh, yeah, that's not just awful, but big. Continuing with big grills. I mean, come on, 50s American cars, the grill is basically the entire front end. Exactly. Now, m moving on to the best looking grills. Now, this one you could constantly argue, but here's our little short list. First up, we have the Mercedes-Benz 300 SL. This simple chrome with the Mercedes star. It's always stayed throughout Mercedes design, and it's just simple, and it works. We also have the classic Mercedes chrome grill, that kind of squared off look. It's just classy and elegant. Moving on to basically every Ferrari in the 1950s, a little bit in the early 60s, they have this gorgeous, gorgeous design on the front. It's so elegant, so stylish, and so well proportioned for these beautiful cars. And of course, how could we not include the Jaguar E-Type? It doesn't really have a grill, it's just an inlet, but it kind of makes it unique because it just blends in. We're moving on to the least functional grills. What do you mean by least functional? Well, they're not exactly grills. They just kind of resonate in the front of the car. Yes. We start off with the Tesla grill. Just Which basically, every the early Tesla models... It's you, black plastic. They're black plastic. And then later on, they just turned into platypuses. And I'm sorry, if you own one, they look like yeah. a platypus. Then we have the BMW M340i. It looks like a grill, but if you zoom in, there's a it's massive delete not. Rate. No, it's not. Then we have the Ford Focus RS. The designers wanted this big look, but they had to put a huge delete plate because it kept the car too cool. <laughs> I think the owners caught on to that one too. <laughs> in this section, we're describing designers versus engineers. What do we mean by this? Well, the designer has one idea for the car, but the engineer needs to make it functional, and sometimes they clash and have a really weird outcome. First up, the infamous Fiat Multipla. You can see the clash in between the design and the engineering. They didn't know what was happening, so they made it into two nicely stacked pancakes. Then, of course, the 1951 Buick LeSabre concept car. The front end is very interesting because you actually don't see any of the headlights. But when you turn the rear, the front grille actually turns around and turns into your front headlights. Now, of course, it's a concept. It was never put into production, but it's interesting nonetheless. And then we have any new Audi. The grill actually looks good, but they made it so big that the Audi just kind of blocked it all off, so it doesn't really take in any air. Moving on to the worst looking grills ever, we have the Chevy Volt. 
which is infamous for its smug smile that demeans on every roadway it ever so passes on. We return to the BMW 7 Series. It's just too big. It's just too big. The train front end of a car my mom formerly owned, the Lexus RX F Sport. Then we have the Hyundai Genesis G80. It's awful. It, it looks like a... Don't need to say much more. Yeah. Then the Jaguar S-Type with its fish grill. Now moving on to the weirdest grills ever. Now this is interesting, as this is a 1934 Brewster Town Car, which I'm pretty sure you cannot find these at every single shopping mart in your own town. But I'm pretty sure by looking at the front of this, you don't want to see them anyways. No, it's a weird heart-shaped, bendy thing. I don't know how else to put it. Then we have the 1936 cord. The front end's just a grill and then it, it, I don't know what it looks like. It's like a catfish thing. Then how could we not include the 1938 Graham? Graham. And the this... designers just made the grill continue. Yeah, and it matches the front headlights, which is pretty cool and all that and the little head that sticks it's up. It's a cord on... with headlights to stay out, yeah. basically. <laughs> not to mention the Cadillac rear grill. When you thought Cadillac did not have enough big grills in the front, they put them in the back. That is how bad it got. This has a three row Cadillac grill. And I think it's just the weirdest thing because it actually looks like the front of the car, especially on the 1960 models. You wouldn't want to mix them up. No. Then the 1959 Edsel. Which as we all know was a catastrophe for Ford because they tried to make, you know, the higher priced, you know, Buick of GM, their, their own Buick. And why would you want to have a grill that looks like this? And then of course, how could we not include the original Dodge Charger? The front end is just a grill. Exactly. Or a vacuum cleaner. All right, oh. everybody. I hope you enjoyed watching this mini special on grills. And like I said, these will be for weeks that we do not have content due to school or any other events happening. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. And as always, I'm Joey. And I'm Derek. And thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time. Next time. Next time. Next time. Goodbye. 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 Bye. Top Camera's off. probably dead, Bye. so we didn't even get the extra. Yeah, you know we didn't. We got it!